Hello again. Um, I am back to do yet another Alice Cooper review. Today's review is going to be 1973's album, Billion Dollar Babies. Now, Billion Dollar Babies had a total of five hits on the album the year it came out. And these five hits were Hello, Hooray, Elected, Billion Dollar Babies, No More Mr. Nice Guy, and Generation Landslide. These five hits were pretty big. I mean, um, not only here in the States, but also in uh, England. Alice Cooper goes on countless interviews and says that, you know, um, England, Britain got it before the Americans did. You know, before America did. Which is cool. I can understand that. I mean, you know, they got the fact that it was a joke. Um, so starting off with Hello, Hooray. Uh, you know, he started off the tour with this song, and many, in a couple of his tours, he started off with this song. And it's one of those songs that's kind of, you know, it gets you amped and ready, and it's, it's about, you know, the beginning of a concert. And so it really fit, you know, with him walking on stage and starting off with the song, and it amped the audience up enough, you know, to keep going, you know. I love this song. Um, I haven't heard it in forever. I had to actually go back and listen to it all the way before I could, you know, review it. But moving on, Raped and Freezing is a funny song. Like, it makes me laugh all the time. And it's about a guy who gets picked up by a chick, she takes him to Mexico, tries to have her way with him, and like, strips him down and everything like that, and then he gets out of the car and he's alone, naked, in Mexico. It's funny. It's very funny. I love listening to it, you know, you know when I need a good laugh. Um, next is Elected, which was another hit, and as I said before on the Priest For You review, uh, Reflected was the, uh, the first version of this song, and this one became a hit, and a lot of people, you know, like, the joke was that Alice Cooper hated politics, and everyone's like, Alice Cooper for president, yeah, so, you know, the song is, is very much like that, and the end of the song, he says something about, you know, I'm going to do whatever I want, and, no, you know, none of you can stop me, so, kind of like the way real politicians are, I think it was like a sneer at real politicians, personally, but, now they put it out because, you know, it was a funny joke, and the music video of this is so funny. Something about a monkey. Uh, Billion Dollar Babies. Of course, the title name to the album was a very good hit. And he had somebody helping him on this. A lot of Cooper fans don't like this person. I can't remember who it is, though. It's someone like Dawson or Dayton or something. I don't remember. Um, I don't know the other artists. But I think that it was a good choice. Simply because, you know, there's there's a real, like, neat little balance with these two artists. Because this Dawson or whoever, um, his voice is very, you know, normal. Kind of like, you know, the richy rich happiness. You know, like, he's, he's high on the mighty pole and he's a good guy. And then Alice Cooper's gritty, like, you know, voice kind of plays as the villain. So there's a real cool, like, good evil balance in this song. Whether it's intentional or not, it happened that way. And I love the fact that it did. And um, I have no qualms with the person who did it, because I don't know who it is. Um, but I know some people are very upset by this, that they did a correlation. But it's okay. And it's really, it's a good song, though, because it's one of those songs that you don't really understand what the heck they're saying. So when Alice Cooper was touring it, he said whatever the hell he wanted to, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, and he did that in countless ones. I'm not sure if he's and say so it's one of those songs that he keeps with, you know, his tours even now. Although I'm not sure if it's on this current tour or not. Unfinished Sweet, I think it's about a dentist, about teeth rotting kind of dentist thing. I know there's a dentist mentioned somewhere in the song, but I can't listen to it. I'm it's one of those songs where I get halfway through it and I'm like, all right, that's good enough. So moving on, uh, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Now this is the story that I wanted to tell earlier, and I figured I'd wait till I got the actual song. Um, in earlier reviews, we were talking about songs like Dead Babies and Killer and Ballad of Dwight Fry, and even songs like uh, Public Animal Number no. Nine. Uh, these songs that were not really well accepted uh, socially caused quite a bit of controversy. Um, his family was basically blacklisted. Um, his father and mother could not show their face around town. Because, you know, they knew that they, you know, they were Alice Cooper's parents, and Alice Cooper's an evil guy, and blah, blah, even though he was a really good guy. And so, hence the song, No More Mr. Nice Guy, because, you know, and it, basically, this is the story of how his parents were blacklisted, and, like, even one verse in this is about how he goes to church. 
and you know the reverend recognizes him and punches him in the face you know like i'm not sure if that ever happened but you know it kind of got the point across what people have been you know putting them through and that it wasn't fair like it was not fair to you know to do that to his parents because you know they had no part in it whatever you know so this came out and it's very ironic because this comes out on the same album that has a song about necrophilia which was again not socially acceptable so it's very ironic um, and it was a hit, which is even more irony. Generation Landslide. I love this song. It's my favorite song on the album, by far. Because it's kind of a state on the human condition. You know, it's like a song about the human condition, and there are parts of this that even Alice Cooper doesn't know what the hell it's about. You know, like, he just said it because it rhymed or whatever, you know? And he's like, you know, who knows what a Colgate Invisible Shield is? Which, I'm still thinking it's something about toothpaste. I don't know. <laughs> but it's a really good song. Catchy, awesome. He actually does a reversion of this song later in '81. I think it's on Special Forces, but it's and it's a live version, and it's different. And I like it too. But this one is really good. And you know, it's it's kind of crazy and out there about talking about um something about babies. I don't know. Um, he liked talking about babies. That's all I'm gonna say. But next, now we get into the three songs that are kind of, you know, songs that. What the hell was that? Um, that are kind of, you know, weird songs, and those are "Sick Things," "Marianne," and "I Love the Dead." I'm gonna cover "Sick Things," "Sick Things," and "Marianne," Marianne at the same time. Sick Things was kind of like a, you know, like a power trip kind of song, like, you know, I have power over my things, there are these sick things, my toys, you know, and it's very, you know, the instrumentation in it is very crazy, it's very, you know, very low in tempo, you know, very low in tempo, very low in, um, I can't remember what it's called, sorry, uh, <laughs> But Marianne uh, is kind of one of those songs where at the end of it you'll raise your eyebrow and put a question, you know, a question mark over your head because the last line in it is, Marianne, I thought you were my man. And of course, since Alice Cooper, being a guy with a girl's name, Marianne kind of puts that question in your head like, huh? What? And the song is very, very, you know, nonsensical-ish, you know. So I Love the Dead. I Love the Dead is about necrophilia. And I'm going to try to do this without blushing because every time I talk about this song, it's one of those where I'm still like, oh my god, I can't believe he's talking about this. I mean, to the point where in the middle of the song you can hear panting, like, you know, something's going on. It puts images in your head, it really does. Um, this song replaced Killer for the song that he died to. Um, and as far as I know, he still uses I Love the Dead for um, his shows, like, you know, when he's, when he's going to die. So, you know, it's one of those things where every time I hear the song, it's like, oh, he's going to be hanged, or he's going to be, you know, beheaded, or, you know, whatever. But it's one of those songs where I still listen to it, and I'm going, oh, wow, um, yeah, uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, okay, and so that's Billion Dollar Babies in a nutshell. Um, five great hits, five very strange songs as well. Um, and when you have a hit, uh, an album that's half hits, that's a pretty good record right there. Um, and the only thing I can say about this is that the weak point in it, I think, is Unfinished Sweet. I, I can't get through that song. Um, my highlight is Generation Landslide. I, I love that song. Like, to death. <laughs> I love it to death. <laughs> um, on the whole, this is a very good album. I, for a first Alice Cooper album, I would not recommend it, though, because the hits are great, but the other ones, the other songs will probably turn you off. Um, he was trying to push boundaries, and once he got to necrophilia, I feel like he almost got too far. But that's about it for this one. So, uh, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and see you later.